I run a stitch. Uh, it's been a long time since I last updated the video, uh, but uh, I moved to Germany and uh, now I'm settled, so I think I can start making new videos again. Now uh, today I'm going to be looking at um, the the game three of the 52nd Meiji title match between Yoshiharu Habu and Kunio Yorinaga. Um, in the previous term, Yorinaga first. I mean, uh, he took the Meiji for the first time in his career. But in the next year, uh, here comes the challenger, Yoshihara Habu. And actually, he takes the Meiji for the first time now. So, uh, this game three is very interesting. Uh, Habu used a very, you know, unusual strategy, which is very uh, funny. And actually, he could win this game. So, let's take a look at this interesting game. So, Sente's. I mean, black is Habu, he played uh, on 2F, AT, 2E, AE, gold 7H, gold 3D, and pawn in 2D. So it's a very usual Aigakari opening, that wing attack opening, pawn takes, rook takes, on 2C, uh, two rook goes back to 2H. Now white does that too, 8F, AG, rook goes back to 8D, a floating rook. Now, uh, Siva moves up to 3H on 3D, 9F, 9D, and pawn to 4F. Um, <coughs> basically, going for a reclining Siva or something. So, this is still a normal opening, but it becomes crazy from here. Uh, pawn to 5D, Siva goes up to 4G. Now, Yonenaga decides to take the Vanguard pawn on the fifth file, pawn to 5E. Uh, that's a pretty aggressive. Now seeing this move, uh, black plays pawn 7f, opening the bishop's diagonal, silver 6b. Uh, well, uh, this the job of this silver is to uh, secure this younger pawn, I guess, but uh, silver goes up to 6h, pawn 70, pawn to 6f, um, then white goes for the 7th file, pawn to 7. Well, this is interesting. After pawn takes, and then he goes for that pawn, rook to 8e. Now, silver goes up to 6g. Now, these two silver's defense, uh, five a squared, uh, rook takes 7e, pawn to 3f, king moves to 4a, and here, well, I think the crazy strategy by Habu starts from here. He played gold to 7g, uh, trying to pressure against the rook and uh, repel the rook back and even build a very very uh, strong thickness along the middle of the board uh, you know you see gold, silver, silver, three pieces on the th uh, third rank this is very aggressive and you know the rook can move on the second rank anytime uh, so rook went back to 7b in advance but then Habu goes for the fifth file he challenges the Vanguard pawn on the fifth file, 5f. Five he takes and the silver on the right takes. Now the Vanguard pawn on the fifth file is lost, but you can see that Black's king is really unguarded. Uh, that's interesting. Now pawn to 1d, gold goes up to 5h, silver 4b. Now even the knight develops uh, for the attack. Rook 7d. Well, this is kind of a losing move. I mean, the loss of moves. Well, he went back to 7b and then 7d, a bit uh, strange. But then, okay, now it becomes really uh, more crazy. Gold to 4g. Now, all the four generals are now above the uh, third rank, and the uh, king is alone in 5-9. Uh, which is a sitting king. Okay, uh, I think Yonenaga is now already very angry seeing this provocative uh, strategy by Habu. But uh, he uh, calmly plays go to 5b, pawn to 5e, now black gets the banner pawn again. Okay, silver goes up to 5c, but then silver goes ahead to 6c attack in the rook. Now, uh, rook has to run. Now, what should black do here? You see the next move? He moved the bishop to 9g. 
okay so he's directly attacking this server well you know part of 9e is not uh, fast enough it, it doesn't work at all uh, maybe he can take this pawn now but uh, maybe then the gold comes up or something and <laughs> yeah black will uh, get more thickness on the middle of the board so uh, actually he played knight to 7c attacking the silver well this is a strong attack attacking the silver and then he attacks the gold I mean actually it's attacking this silver I mean this bishop as well so this is a very strong attack but he played bishop to uh, 7 attack in the rock now maybe taking the silver is a bit too much to do so uh, he had to save the rook 8, eight 1 yeah now he can save the silver to 7d that's good but he even uh, he even keeps that silver there pushes this pawn first now the question is what if he takes it takes it this is a uh, exciting situation but maybe not good for white so he had to play silver 4d then he saves the suit to 70 attack in the knight. He has to defend with the pawn. And then the silver even goes up to 5f. Now, really, this is crazy. The king is alone in 5 9. Now, uh, obviously, black is going to ex go for the exchange of the silver and you know drop the silver to uh, here in 5c. Uh, so actually, you know, I got defended by pawn drop to 5a in advance. Uh, so after black drops the zero there, uh, the skull is uh, protected already. Hmm. But anyway, uh, zero goes up to 4e, zero goes back, then he goes for the third file. Pawn takes, and now what? Rook to 5h, central rook. Uh, the proverb says, do not uh, put your rook and king close to each other. But he ignores that proverb. Uh, pawn to 60. Okay, now here comes a counterattack by Yonanaga. This is very tactical move. Uh, he took the pawn, but then here comes a very uh, annoying uh, dangling pawn. Because this pawn is protected only with the gold, so if he takes it, the rook can promote. So, of course, he can take this bond, so he ignores it, and he goes for the second one. Now, this is a real tactical move uh, as well. Um, I don't know the, the outcome, but if he takes a silver, maybe he can take this knight and drop it here, for example. Uh, I'm not sure if... He, but anyway, he didn't take it. He moved the bishop back to 3a, covering this square, also... Uh, Challenging this bishop. Uh, well, now what he did is silver takes a knight, and he now dropped the knight to uh, five c. Because now the bishop is here, the king cannot run three a. So this is a good time to drop the knight here. So silver takes, pawn takes, bishop takes, bishop takes. Yeah, you can see the rook is attacking there. And uh, actually, Yonagan did not take this horse. He dropped a silver 6h. Okay, has to run. Now what? He, uh, now what should he do? I mean, he wanted to, of course, drop a pawn here. But you can see the pawn is on 5a, which means it's a double pawn. It's illegal move. So he played knight drop on 6, uh, 3f. Uh, Black took it with a silver, pawn takes, but you can see, however, uh, the 4e square is now open, so this pawn promotion to 2c is really um, uh, severe. Gold has to take, but here comes the bishop fork on 4e, right? So, uh, however, he can now drop the silver to 5g, okay, rook takes, silver takes, gold takes, well, he took it with the rook anyway. 
Um, so uh, he can take the horse now. So now he can take the rook or gold, but he chose to take the gold actually. And bishop blocks. So uh, actually, this means he can now take the bishop again, uh, keeping this threat again. So uh, he dropped a C right there, 2C. Uh, if he takes, yeah, that bishop fork is, uh, can happen again, but maybe his idea is this, I don't know. So anyway, he could not take the silver, and he played King go back to 4A. So, uh, which is winning here? You can see uh, what has a bishop and rook. The king is pretty lone in here. Uh, pawn is attacking the knight. Uh, there's a pawn here. It's pretty dangerous. But black has so many pieces in hand. And, uh, well, the next move was this. Knight to 4e, attacking the gold. Attacking the zero, which is not important here. So the knight could uh, run away and attack the gold. Uh, what should white do? He has pretty um, strong rook drop here on set uh, 2g, for example, or a bishop drop 7 9. But actually, this knight attack on the 5c square is too severe for him. So uh, the thing is, when I actually resign here. So Habu took this game with a very uh, provocative strategy. And uh, finally, he uh, took the maging with uh, four wins and two losses in this title match. So it was a very interesting game. Hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.